So on every project that I work on, I have a handful of effects that I can apply to help enhance my project. So in this After Effects video, I wanna talk about my top 10 favorite effects of this year. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So it seems like every single year, I have a handful of new effects that I like using for that year. And these 10 effects are the ones that I've been using this year. So I promise if you watch this entire video, you're gonna be able to produce better work. And if you produce better work, that means that's gonna work out great for your career long term. So let's go ahead and jump into our list and let's get started on our top 10 effects in After Effects. All right, and starting off our list, the first effect we have is under distort and it's called CC Lens. And what this effect allows us to do is kind of just distort the image and ball it up. So how this effect works is simple. And if you want, you can add a keyframe for size and you can move forward in time and you can undistort your image. And what this will do is just create a nice little curved warp look on your image. And I love this effect. And it's a good effect to reveal onto your scene and it's just fun to see if this effect will help enhance your comp. All right, moving on is the glow effect. And I don't mean just any basic glow effect. I'm talking about an advanced but easy glow effect that's gonna make your work look professional. So what we'll do is go to a perspective and we'll add a drop shadow. Yes, drop shadow. We'll set it to any color you want your glow to be. Then set your softness up to 20. Then duplicate the drop shadow effect, set it to 80. Then we'll go to effect stylize and we'll grab glow. All right, from here, where it says glow color, set this to A and B colors. And then set color looping to sawtooth B greater than A. Set your color A to your drop shadow color. Then what we do is set the glow intensity to 2.5 and we can duplicate the glow effect. And we'll set the glow radius up to 100 for this layer. Then we'll duplicate the glow effect one more time and click on reset. And now we have a really cool glow effect in here. And if you want, you can all click stopwatch for the first glow intensity. And you can type in wiggle 2 comma 5. And now we have a really cool glow effect in here. So my next favorite effect I like using is shift channels, which can be used for creating glitch effects, RGB effects, but I like using it to create a very subtle color variation. So when all your work is done, what you can do is go to effect channel and you grab shift channels and you come here to the green channel, set it to full off, come here to the blue channel, set it to full off, take your all your work, duplicate it, and you can come here, turn off the red channel, come here to the green channel, turn that back to green and duplicate your work one more time. Come here to the green channel, turn that off, go to the blue channel, set it back to blue. Grab your two top layers and set the blend mode to screen. All right, now what we can do is hit P on keyboard for one of the layers and we can slightly offset it by a few points. And you're gonna create a very subtle look onto your work, right? And then we grab another layer, we can offset it by just a point or so. And what we can do is all click the stopwatch and type in wiggle and we do like two comma three close parentheses, something very subtle. So with this effect put together, you get a very subtle RGB effect and I really like it. So another one of my favorite effects I've been using for a very long time is called optics compensation. And it's just like CC lens, but it creates another unique look that I think works a lot better in almost every situation. So you have the effect in here in an adjustment layer and we can increase our field of view all the way up to like 120 and we check on reverse lens distortion and maybe you can bring it down by a little bit and what this is going to do is pull the scene a lot closer to you and i absolutely love using this effect and as things get closer to the edge of the composition it's just going to be kind of pulled to the edges and it's just a very creative and fun effect to use to quickly just provide a creative look to your project. And before we move on to the next effect on our list, I wanna give you a huge shout out to our After Effects extension, which helps you produce amazing work and save a tremendous amount of time with our After Effects templates. So this is our motion graphics starter extension where we can preview hundreds of elements just by hovering over them inside of After Effects within any After Effects project. And we have hundreds of titles accent motion graphics, animated backgrounds, and more within this one pack. And when we find an asset that we want, we can just click on apply and it automatically applies a title animation to our composition, which we can go into and easily change out our titles. And we can come into our control layer and make any adjustments to help fit our title best and easily change the color of any elements and titles very easily. And to help enhance this even further, we can come here and apply a quick cluster to take this to the next level with a click of a button. So within about a minute's worth of time, we've been able to put together a full composition with some really nice details very quick with our motion graphics starter pack. And we have several other packs that we can easily switch over to and start applying templates from there as well. 
So if you want to save a tremendous amount of time while producing awesome work, you can take a look at our packs off our website. I will link them below. If you do pick up anything, you will be supporting our channel. So thank you very much. All right, so this is a blur effect, specifically the camera lens blur effect. What it allows us to do is take a very sharp composition and naturally blur it out as if it was shot by a camera. So create an adjustment layer and we'll go to effect blur sharpen and add camera lens blur. And we'll set the blur radius up to 11. You don't need to go crazy with this. And you're gonna get this very beautiful blur effect on your composition. However, you know, in this situation, this looks great, but maybe for you, you wanna cut this out a little bit more specifically. So I'm gonna grab the pen tool. And what I'm gonna do here is create a very nice mask in here to create somewhat of a depth of field. And when I have my mask in here, I'm gonna set it to subtract and hit F on my keyboard for mask feather and set it up to 200 pixels. And with our mask in here, you can see somewhat more of an in-focus look here on our composition. And as it moves closer to the sides of our comp, things seem to get more out of focus. And that's why I love the camera lens blur effect. So this is probably my most used effect. I think I use it on every single project and that is the noise effect. And I don't think I get taken too seriously with this effect, but honestly, it's amazing. Just try it. So you go to effect noise and grain and you add noise. It's very basic and you can set it up to like five to 12% and uncheck use color noise. And this just looks amazing. And when you relate this to video, it has noise when you film video, but when you do motion graphics in After Effects, you don't have any noise. And this seems to just make work a little bit more cinematic. And I don't like using that term, but it just looks awesome. So give it a try. All right, the echo effect. I love using this with very basic animation with titles. So. This will create variations of your animation. So when you have an animation in here, what you do is go to effect time and grab the echo effect. And you wanna keep this very subtle. So you can come here and just set the number of echoes up to say nine. And you can come here to echoes per second and just slightly lower down the time if you want. And this will create a very nice multi-layered animation that just looks really cool. An effect I always find myself using whether I'm working on video clips or titles is motion tile. And what it does is allow you to create seamless backgrounds or seamless transitions. So for example, if you wanna create a seamless title, what you could do is pre-compose that title and you can just shorten down the composition to be around the title like I have here. And then what you do is you take that composition and then you go to effect, stylize and grab motion tile. And all you do is come here to output width, you can increase that and output height and you can increase that as well. And then you can add a keyframe for tile center and you can move forward and you can just animate one of the values here or both of them. And now you can get a repeatable title or a video clip by using the motion tile effect. All right, next up on our list is creating a very easy and quick glitch effect. So we'll do effect is store and that effect is gonna be called wave warp, okay? What we're gonna do is come here to the wave type, set it to noise. And we'll come here to the wave width and we can set this up to like 7,000. All right, and then you're gonna get some glitches in here. Go to the pinning and click on all edges. And you're gonna get a very subtle glitch effect with the wave warp that's very easy to manage. And you can use it just for titles, or your entire compositions, or just whatever you wanna add a little bit of glitch, it's for you. Okay, the last effect we're gonna talk about is something that is super simple, but it's gradient ramp. And before you dislike this video for just a very simple and easy effect, I love using gradient ramp for creating amazing title designs. For example, everything in our 100 title pack basically has a gradient to it. And by using a gradient, you're gonna be able to create a very slight variation to it. And it's almost an art to use a gradient ramp on a title. Let me show you how we can do this. So we'll come here to generate and we'll grab gradient ramp. So to use the color gradient, it's a little bit of an art. So we'll grab our sort of color and we can select any color that we want. So any light color at the top will do. You wanna do a light color at the top and a darker color at the bottom. But once you have your light color on the top, what you do is you grab end of color, select that same exact color, and then you go to the color stop and you just select something a little bit darker here. Click okay. Then what you wanna do is grab start a ramp, bring down the Y value until that's kind of there at the top. Then grab the end of color and slightly bring this up just below the title. Then you can select end of color again and maybe move it over to a more saturated version of the color. And you're gonna create a very nice gradient for your title. And this is generally in the same color palette, just slightly contrasted from the top to the bottom and it looks great. So that's my top 10 effects here inside of After Effects. You're not gonna be able to use all 10 of these on every project, but you might be able to use one or two 
on pretty much every project and just experiment with several of them to see if they work or not for what you're trying to do. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials on After Effects and Premiere Pro every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are below and always be creative.